Unacceptable. Here you go. Here's a classic example where somebody should just have used the phrase unacceptable. And I really want to go into this bar where this guy went. Um, so, Bill, I show up to this local sports bar at 11 p.m. the night before my birthday by myself. I don't know what your problem is. Stop lashing out at the people around you. Right now, look at me. I'm taking it out on you because I'm out of material here or whatever the fuck it is. I've lost my stream of consciousness. Still one to one, by the way, with 12 minutes and 32 seconds to go. Um, all right. So anyways, Bill, uh, I show up to a local sports bar at 11 PM the night before my birthday by myself. All right. He goes, the bartender asked for my ID. I give it to her. She hands it back and asks me what I would like. Now I'm not looking for comments, but you would, you would think the bartender would be aware of the date and time and have some snide remark about hanging out by myself, um, this close to my birthday. Well, I think she's just trying to see or he's trying to see if you're of age or not, right? I don't fucking know. Anyways, uh, I'm not upset. I'm just expecting a stupid comment. So I ask her uh, what the specials are. She tells me that the large domestics are three bucks and well drinks are two bucks. I see they have Blue Moon on tap. I'm not a huge fan, but it's 22 ounces of beer for three bucks. I'll suck it up. I order. She says, okay, and serves it. Fast forward to the bill. It seems a tad high, and I see I was charged four fifty for each of the three beers. I ask about the bill, and she said, oh, only domestics are $3. My reply was, Blue Moon is a domestic beer. It's made in America. And she says, no, domestics are Bud, Miller, and Coors. Now, wait a minute. I thought Blue Moon, wasn't that made in fucking Belgium? Now I got to fucking look it up before I take your side here because I really want to be Blue Moon. All right. Blue Moon Brewing Company. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's a whole fucking website. Isn't Blue Moon? It's not a Belgian beer. Date of birth. Enter. I have to give you a valid date of birth to read about beer? Are you fucking kidding me? All right, let's go to Wikipedia. God knows that's fucking accurate, right? A blue moon is a full moon. That's not what I want. Blue moon beer, you fucking... No one gives a shit about space. Actually, I do. My brother's really into space. And I learned the other day, I thought something was the North Star. He's like, that's not the North Star, that's Jupiter. I go, get the fuck out of here. He goes, yeah, first of all, he goes, stars twinkle, planets reflect light. So ever since then, I've been looking up at the sky and I'm going, that's a fucking planet. I want to know what that is. And I want to go buy a telescope, but there's no way to buy a telescope without looking like a fucking pervert. You know what I mean? That's yet another thing that perverts have fucking ruined. The same way gay guys have ruined cowboy boots, cowboy hats, and Fu Man shoes. You can't fucking, you know, you can't wear any of that shit unless you're on a fucking ranch wrestling a fucking cow to the goddamn ground or else people think you're out there blowing someone um all right blue moon beer let's see here blue moon beer is molson Coors brewing company all right so he is fucking right good now i can side with you because i really want to go off on this so the fucking dude is ordering a domestic beer and she goes no domestics are bud miller and Coors. two things first why couldn't she mention that Blue Moon is not considered a domestic beer when I ordered? But second, let's look at the bigger picture. I'm sure, Bill, you've run into this. You're told domestics are on sale for happy hours, so you order a Sam Adams, at which point you're told Sam Adams isn't considered a domestic beer. Well, actually, um, you may have thought, yes, Sam Adams is a domestic beer. It was made by the blood of the American patriots, you dumb cunt. I like this guy. Uh, who, made the deci- who made the decision to call shitty beers domestic beer? What kind of uh, euphemism is that? Whenever this happens in the future, I'm going to ask for a manager and tell them that not including all domestic beers with their domestic specials is unacceptable. Dude, you should have fucking said that. Unless this is actually made in a different com- uh, country and Molson Coors Brewing just bought it. You guys want to hear about it? Blue Moon is a Belgian style Wheat beer brewed by the Molson Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado. It's a fucking domestic beer. Was launched in 1995. In Canada, it is marketed as a similar beer called Rickards White. Why? Do they not have Blue Moons up there? Is Blue Moon offensive? 
and it's brewed in Montreal, Quebec. All right, so some of it is brewed in another country. Is that there out? Well, then it should be called Rickards White, right? Dude, bottom line is you got fucked. Yeah, that's what they should say. Our, our cheap-ass beers are, uh, are three bucks, and anything with any sort of hops and flavor in it is going to be four fifty. There you go. That's the big outrage of the week. This dude got fucked. Um, all right, that's the end of my lackluster one. You know what I mean? What the fuck do you guys want from me? I do one of these every fucking week. I'm running out of stories to tell you. I already did that gay guy joke before. I've already done the fucking... I think I need to take a break, just like the Foo Fighters. You know, when they sold out Wembley Stadium, they sold it out twice, and they were sitting around going, what the fuck else can we do? Just like when uh, the Beatles sold out Shea Stadium, or the police sold out Shea Stadium. That's when you just realize, well, the only way to go now is to go down. I think I've begun the backward slide. I'm sliding down the backside of, uh, of the podcast. And I was actually thinking about that. How long am I going to do this podcast? You know, Oprah's retiring. <laughs> She's calling it quits after 25 fucking years. I mean, I've basically done one episode every week for the past two and a half years or two years, two months. So 52 weeks a year, that's 104 episodes plus like another 20 maybe. I'm up to 125 episodes, all right? Back in the day, if you did a sitcom, you needed 100 episodes to go into syndication. I'm in syndication right now. So think about that shit. I'm like, if this was the Drew Carey show, I would be in like the seventh season, you know? when they've added the fat chick with the crazy makeup because we're out of story ideas, you know? So my question to you is, how, how much longer should I do this? When do I bow out gracefully and come out with a new, a new form of, uh, what do they call this shit on the internet? Huh? Viral? Do I, do I take it to the next level and I do a video? Maybe I'll do a video podcast next and I'll, do like, I'll, I'll have puppets. All right, I'll have the cunt puppet, right? Which would just be sort of some twat-shaped tortilla with uh, red lips on it, you know, that can talk. And uh, whatever, I'm, I'm just sort of brainstorming here. I don't fucking know, puppets are creepy. You know, you ever go back and watch Mr. Rogers and just see how creepy those fucking puppets are? You know why? Because their mouths didn't move. King Friday. Hello, Lady McLean, how are you? <laughs> my neighbors must think I'm out of my fucking mind. I actually did it in the living room this week. You know, that's why I had the, the nice Carnegie Hall sort of uh, acoustics in here. Oh, my dog fucking walked out on me. You know, I really think my dog finds me annoying. You know, when I practice my guitar, she has a habit of going... <sighs> it gives me like a big fucking exhale. And if I'm practicing anything up high, like I was trying to learn how to play the beginning of For Those About to Rock, We Salute You, which is way up on the neck of the guitar. And I was trying to play it the way Angus plays it, which is a combination of uh, using a pick and plucking with two other fingers. So needless to say, it sounded like somebody was choking a sparrow. And uh, my dog, you know, she sort of got, you know, just lifted her head up and sort of looked at me. And I laughed because I knew I was bugging her. And then I was so focused on trying to be able to play this for some stupid fucking reason. And uh, when I came out of my fucking comatose state, I looked and the dog had left. So uh, I don't know what the point of that was. You know what the point was? The point was to somehow get to 50 minutes because um, if I don't do it for 50 minutes, then I can't continue to, to not get paid for this. Um, let's type my website, uh, billbird.com. Um, once again, go there and uh, fucking... I don't know. Go to my show in Cleveland or go to my show at Sacramento. Those are in, in uh, the punchline of Sacramento. Those are the next two weeks I have coming up. And, uh, or come on out and watch my live taping. Oh, somebody asked me a question. They're like, which one of the two shows are being taped that night? Are both of them being taped? And if you tape both, will you combine both and make one special? Yes. Yes, I will. That's what happens. You tape both of them. And if I just have one set that's just fucking awesome and I loved it wire to wire, which I hope is going to happen, I'll just take that because I'm, I'm really big into, uh, you know, not creating a performance that didn't happen. Uh, my CD is all one show 
Why do I do this? We only did, we only taped one show. So that's all one show. Uh, my HBO special, we did two. <laughs> 